Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Okay, so happy Thursday, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live on nursing participation and delegation. So welcome, everybody. I think a lot of you are in the comment section commenting. Uh, thank you very much for attending and for being patient and waiting for our uh, practice questions for tonight. So hopefully everybody can hear me. Okay. Uh, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Alan Matus and I am a nurse educator. I have been helping students for almost 25 years pass their NCLEX licensure examination. And also currently I am a nursing faculty. So as a nursing faculty, I have been helping students also pass their nursing program. And also, if you don't know everyone, I am also the author of a book, okay, that you can purchase on Amazon, okay. So the name of the book is Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review Book. And you can purchase this at Amazon, and it's now available in the Philippines. And in the Philippines, you can email Matus Nursing Review Academy at gmail.com if you want to have a black and white copy of the book. So it has a five-star rating, everybody, and it's a simple, fast, and easy NCLEX review book. So unlike uh, your books in nursing programs that are very comprehensive, this book is, uh, is simplified and summarized in such a way that uh, it can easily prepare you for the NCLEX. So for example, if you have a week to prepare for the NCLEX or two weeks, or you want to brush up a little bit on your core content, then this is the best book for you, everyone. So anyone who has the book, and if you like the book, I would appreciate if you can give a shout out in the comment section, everybody. Okay, so before anything else also, I would like to give a shout out to the following people who came in early tonight. So I think the earliest people who came in tonight were the following. So let's see if we can have their names. So we have uh, the earliest people to come in were Atitaya. No, we also have Janine. Hi, Janine. Uh, Janine actually passed her NCLEX recently. Okay. Um, so congratulations, Janine, for passing the NCLEX. And she's our student in the online NCLEX Academy also. So we also have Menchi. Hi, Menchi, our student. Also Sharon also. We have uh, Lean, Merlin, Gian Torres, Abidemi also. Now, uh, I realize that I'm not always with you 24 hours a day to teach you, but... Uh, I hold you guys responsible to be disciplined in studying and using the resources that we provide to you guys. So um, uh, that's good because uh, most of you are passing the NCLEX or you're passing the NCLEX everyone and that really shows that you truly put your personal personal effort in order to pass your NCLEX because it's all about dedication and hard work, okay? Nobody's going to push you except yourself to pass your NCLEX examination, okay? So we have uh, a lot of people here tonight. I'm going to give you a shout out later on. And also, guys, if you can put uh, your location, that would be awesome to know your location for tonight's uh, class, okay, or session. All right. So um, let's have our first agenda for tonight. We have, of course, our testimonial. So our testimonial is coming from Janine, who is one of our students who recently passed the NCLEX examination. So Janine said, um, hello, I would like to extend my utmost and utmost and heartfelt gratitude to Sir Alan and Matus Nursing Review. I just passed my exam last May 12, 2021 with 75 questions. Thank you to Sir Alan for the every week pre prioritization and delegation questions and discussions. Through that simple and short session, I was able to enhance my skills in answering questions and learn more about the concepts tackled. I would also like to thank him for granting me the free 90-day self-review program. This really helped me a lot while answering the questions during my exam. The concepts were concise, simple, and direct to the point with lots of practice questions every topic. It was very useful to me and I really gained a lot of learning from it, not only for my exam, but as I practice this profession. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Alan. May you continue to inspire us and make others dream of becoming USR and come true. So congratulations, Janine, for passing your NCLEX and thank you for the lengthy and inspiring testimonial. Thank you very much. All right. Now, also, I would like to make a very quick announcement before we dive into the questions. Uh, we have Memorial Day coming up. So we have a sale ongoing again. Um, the sale is only for three days, everyone. 50% uh, off again for our self-study comprehensive online NCLEX review course. One year unlimited online access and class review, 
you enter your cup uh, coupon code at checkout. So that would be a 50% RN or 50% PN. So you have to share the code and then also or to uh, enter the code. And also we have a sale ongoing with our workbook. So our workbook is on sale instead of $94.50, it's 30% 30, 30 off. So that would be only uh, $66 only every month. So this is our workbook, everyone. Okay, so it's almost like 400 pages, very nice uh, pages. Okay, so you have the workbook and it has uh, exercises, everybody. So you can see that. Okay, let me see. So it has exercises and pictures and uh, which makes it possible for you to study uh, in a way that is not uh, boring, okay, or tedious. So that's our workbook, everyone. And a lot of our students like this, put that away. All right, so that's our sale. Then another one, okay. So in July, we're gonna have our next session for the 10 day live comprehensive and collection review webinar. It's every Saturday from 8 to 4 p.m. Saturday class from July 24 to September 25. So if you have graduated 20 years ago or you are a recent graduate and you really want to master your core content, so this is the course for you. This is focused on core content. So uh, it's very important, as I've said, that when you take the NCLEX, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you have a good content review because you cannot answer critical thinking questions if you're not even um, well-versed or knowledgeable about the basic content that you need to know for passing the NCLEX examination. So again, this is every Saturday from July 24 to September 25, 2021. That will be the 10-day live comprehensive NCLEX review webinar. Okay? All right. So next, also for tonight, I know everybody's excited about this, the free 90-day online access NCLEX review. So if you win tonight, you get free 90-day online access. So stay over after this. Um, so watch out for our announcement. Whoever wins this for tonight, everyone. Okay, so we'll announce the winner. We're going to have a raffle for tonight. Okay, all right. And of course, before we start, just really very quickly, guys, if you can share this session or you can also subscribe if you're watching in YouTube, I would really appreciate that, everybody. Okay, share and subscribe. So three, two, one, or one, two, three. All right. And also, I would like to appreciate um, Vibrant Dian Rose for saying um, how blessed she is that she has found my review program and. Uh, she and her husband won the free 90 day online NCLEX review and that's really very good. So hopefully you will pass your NCLEX and we will shout you out in this session. So hopefully, so study very well, Diane, okay? All right, so are you ready for our first question for tonight, everyone? This is going to be urinary system. Of course, a combination of all the other concepts in medical surgical nursing or other topics, of course. So let's have our first topic, everybody, okay? All right, so first topic is going to be prioritization, okay? So we have the following topics, everyone. So the question is, the nurse cares for the following clients with renal disorders. Which client requires immediate attention? A, the 36-year-old client who develops nausea and low back pain during a blood transfusion. B, the 25-year-old client with ureteral calculi who reports pain, 9 over 10, and a bloody urine. C, the 29-year-old client with acute glomerulonephritis who has a blood pressure of 145 over 90 millimeters of mercury and dark brown urine. Or letter D, the 42-year-old client with chronic renal failure who has a palpable thrill on the shunt before hemodialysis. So which one do you think is the correct answer here? So I will read the question again. The nurse cares for the following clients with renal disorders. Which client requires immediate attention? A, the 36-year-old client who develops nausea and low back pain during a blood transfusion. B, the 25-year-old client with ureteral calculi who reports pain, 9 over 10, and a blood 9-year-old client with acute glomerulonephritis who has a blood pressure 
of 145 over 90 millimeters of mercury and dark brown urine, or letter D, the 42-year-old client with chronic renal failure who has a palpable frill on the shunt before hemodialysis. And if you put your answer, guys, make sure that you put the rational as well while you put a particular answer, okay? So analyze the question very well, okay? And of course, some of you indicated your location for tonight. Okay, so we have Carrie Ann Gordon is from Jamaica, okay? Richard Mitoya is from Guam. Uche is from Maryland. We have Marlene St. Flavin is Florida. And then we have also from Baltimore is going to be Abby Demi. Okay. All right. So let's see the answer to this question, everyone. What do you think is the answer? Okay. So the answer, everybody, to this question, okay, is going to be letter, let's see. Yes, of course, everybody is correct. This is a very simple question, everyone. The answer is going to be letter A, and this is one of the most popular questions in the NCLEX, your blood transfusion reaction. You have to understand that you have different types of blood transfusion reaction. You have your hemolytic reaction, you have your febrile reaction, and you also have your allergic or anaphylactic reaction. For all of these reactions, if you have febrile reaction, hemolytic reaction, or if you have a uh, allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction, then you have to stop the blood transfusion. Now, in this situation, letter A is a hemolytic reaction, which means to say that a wrong type of blood was given to the patient. And if there is a wrong type of blood given to the patient, the reaction will be hemolytic reaction wherein the RBCs will be broken down and also the immune reaction causes damage to the kidney. And that's why there will be low back pain. So low back pain is an indication that kidney damage may be happening as well. So that's the reason why low back pain is a very popular or a very uh, uh, important manifestation of kidney damage whenever you have a hemolytic reaction. So let us raise the answer, everyone. Now, of course, why is B not the answer? Because B, uh, pain 9 over 10, uh, of course, a severe pain when you have a kidney stone and a bloody urine. Um, that happens when you have kidney stones. However, is that more important than A and B? If A is not there, B will be a very good answer. You know why? Because it's 9 over 10, that's pain, and you have bloody urine as well. However, A is more important than your letter B. Your letter C, um, it's expected for those patients with acute glomerulonephritis to have uh, slight hypertension or mild hypertension or even severe hypertension. So in this situation, you have 145 over 90 and dark brown urine. So which are normal findings in acute glomerulonephritis because you have uh, hematuria and proteinuria in these conditions, okay? Now your letter D, the 42-year-old client with chronic renal failure who has a palpable thrill on the shunt before hemodialysis, you have to remember that uh, one of the signs that the uh, shunt or the fistula um, is patent uh, for patients with hemodialysis will be the presence of uh, a palpable frill or the presence of uh, an audible uh, ruid. okay? So just remember letter D is expected, so that's not abnormal. So this is a very simple question, everybody, okay? So the best answer is going to be letter A. Now, if A is not there, then we might be concerned about letter B because pain is also a priority in this situation. It's 9 over 10, and you have also bloody urine. Okay, so in the NCLEX, there is no definite answer in every situation. You always have to look A, B, C, and D and always decide which comes first. And always you have to use your Maslow's hierarchy of needs, your airway, breathing, and circulation, your safety, infection control, or infection, your pain level as well. Okay, so the answer is going to be letter A, everyone. So congratulations. Who got one point in that question? So congratulations, guys. Okay, all right. So... Olienka said that's transfusion reaction, and that's exactly correct, okay? Now let's go to the next question for tonight, everyone, okay? Number two is gonna be prioritization question again. So let's see if you can answer this question. The nurse performs walking rounds in a medical surgical unit after the change of shift report. Which client should be seen first? 
A, the 48-year-old client who develops red-colored urine after taking phenazopyridine for cystitis. B, the 25-year-old client who reports bladder spasms while on continuous bladder irrigation after a transurethral resection prostatectomy. C, the 62-year-old client with benign prostatic hypertrophy who started to develop frequent urination at night. And Larry B, the 54-year-old client who is anxious due to passage of pink thin urine after returning from cystoscopy. So which one do you think requires immediate assessment or which one should be seen first? A, the 48-year-old client who develops red-colored urine after taking phenazoparidine for cystitis. B, the 25-year-old client who reports bladder spasms while on continuous bladder irrigation after a transurethral resection prostatectomy. C, the 62-year-old client with benign prostatic hypertrophy who started to develop frequent urination at night. Or D, the 54-year-old client who is anxious due to passage of pink tinge urine after returning from cystoscopy. What do you think is the best answer and what is the rationale for your answer, everyone? What is the rationale for your answers, everybody? I would like to hear your rationale, everyone. Okay, why is the answer A, why is it B, why C, or why D? So I can see a lot of people putting the answers now, very good. All right, A, B, C, or D. Okay, so while waiting for the answers of everyone, I'm gonna give a shout out to those who just came in. So we have Leia, we have Richard Frias Nitoya, we also have Menchi, Garcia Leyan, we also have, uh, of course, a lot of people here, Halima Talimi, uh, Patel Sueta, Mas Ayeli, Yoshika Singh. Thank you for being here again tonight. Okay. Mulo Hadera. Okay. Patel Sueta, Al Adlao. Hi Al, how are you? Yuldus Muraduba from New York. Okay. All right. All right. So the answer to this question, okay, the answer is going to be. Let's see everyone. The answer is going to be, all right, it's going to be letter B. Most of you got the right answer, very good. So the answer is going to be letter B because bladder spasms while on continuous bladder irrigation indicates that there could be uh, an obstruction in the catheter, okay? In the catheter, in the three-way catheter so there could be an obstruction and that's why there's bladder spasms and we all know that bladder spasms lead to pain and can also lead to bleeding to bleeding so it's very important to check what's the cause of bladder spasm and also to give medications in order to reduce bladder spasms that happens in turp or transurethral resection prostatectomy because it can lead to bleeding okay now yes that's very Correct. So Yoshika said that uh, it indicates clot obstruction or any kinks. Very good. Okay. So bladder spasms. All right. So. Okay. Now A is not the answer because red color urine is an expected side effect of phenazopyridine or the brand name for that is your pyridium. So very good guys. You got the right answer for that. Okay. Your letter C, what you have there benign prostatic hypertrophy who started the keyword is who started to develop frequent urination now remember that for bph um we somehow expect that this patient will develop nocturia you know you have to remember the signs and symptoms of your bph which are your what uh, signs and symptoms will be your frequency urgency hesitancy weak stream of urine and later on probably also is nocturia okay now, although we have to be worried a little bit with letter C because of the fact that it says it started, you know, it started. But still, however, letter B becomes a, is more of a priority compared to letter C. Now, your letter D, which is anxious due to the passage of pink tinge urine, this is basic knowledge, okay? Remember, after cystoscopy, 
it's normal to have pink tinge urine okay due to the insertion of the scope into the bladder that causes irritation and a little bit of injury and that's why pink tinge urine is expected okay but if you have bloody urine after cystoscopy then that needs to be reported okay so the answer everyone is going to be letter b and also just to let you know that in the nclex um it's a big favorite questions about continuous bladder irrigation after transurethral resection prostatectomy so study that very well everyone especially how you manage the three-way foley catheter for continuous bladder irrigation after a prostatectomy okay especially the importance of preventing or monitoring for bladder spasm and giving medications and making sure you know making sure that your system is patent and you have to understand also the reason why your bladder irrigation is being done okay and always remember when you do your bladder irrigation make sure that your measurement of intake and output remember that uh, you uh, do not include the bladder irrigation solution that you're instilling okay so all of this just letting you know that uh, when you study the urp make sure that you really understand the reason for continuous bladder irrigation okay all right so are you ready for our third question tonight everyone so let's see if some of you have comments okay so very good so let's have the third question everyone this will be also again prioritization okay the nurse cares for the following clients in the emergency room which client needs priority intervention okay a the 56 year old client with severe fatigue chills and temperature of 100.4 degrees fahrenheit due to influenza B, the 35-year-old client who coughs up pink frothy sputum due to bronchopneumonia. C, the 23-year-old client who complains of flank pain after a motor vehicular accident. And letter D, the 46-year-old client with duodenal ulcer who reports burning stomach pain two hours after eating. Okay, again. The nurse cares for the following clients in the emergency room, which client needs priority intervention. A, the 56-year-old client with severe fatigue, chills, and temperature 100.4 deg degrees Fahrenheit due to influenza. B, the 35-year-old client who coughs up pink frothy sputum due to bronchopneumonia. C, the 23-year-old who complains of uh, flank pain after motor vehicular accident. And letter D, the 46-year-old client with duodenal ulcer who reports burning stomach pain two hours after eating. So what do you think is the answer, everyone? A, B, C, or D? Okay. All right. What do you think is the answer, everybody? And put your rationale. Okay. Why is it A? Why is it B? Why is it C? Okay, why is it D? Put your rational, everyone. Okay? A, B, C, or D? What's the answer? Okay? What's the answer, everyone? All right, A, B, C, and D. All right, so the answer is going to be A, B, C, or D. All right. Okay. The answer is going to be All right, so everybody what do you think is the priority in this question? Who comes first? Who comes first, everyone? Okay. What will be the best answer? All right. So the answer, everybody, for this question 
It's very interesting because uh, some of you have different answers now. Okay, so let's see. The answer to this question, everyone, is going to be letter B. Okay, so letter B is the answer, everyone. And why is B the answer? Some of you, you went for the answer, which is letter C. Okay, all right. Now, why is B the answer? Number one, it's airway. Okay, airway. Airway, breathing, and circulation, and not just always on the airway. Now, in pneumonia, it's expected to find fever. In pneumonia, it's expected to find diuretic chest pain or chest pain, but to find mucus that is pink and frothy, that indicates the presence of pulmonary edema. Okay? Pulmonary edema, which means to say, that it will compromise the oxygenation of your patient. If you can remember, pink frothy sputum, especially the word frothy, is a sign of pulmonary edema. Okay? So, that's why letter B is the answer. Okay? And your letter C your flank pain after a motor vehicle or accident, well, that could be a priority as well because there could be organ damage or it could be a, a muscle strain, but uh, it's unlikely that you have pancreatitis or bladder injury there. Um, it needs further evaluation, of course. Your letter C is a priority as well, but your letter B comes first because that is your airway. Okay, your oxygenation, right? So that's why your letter B comes first, everyone. So going back to this, so remember that the answer in this question is going to be letter what? Letter B, okay? Because it's going to be your oxygenation again, everybody. Got it, everybody? So at this time, you will say, oh, it's expected, but it's not actually expected. You can have mucus secretions, in patients with pneumonia, however, having pink frothy sputum is pulmonary edema, and we need to act on that right away. Okay, we may need diuretics for that. We may need uh, um, interventions to reduce the fluid in the lungs, of course. Okay, so hopefully everybody you are learning. Okay, all right for tonight. So very interesting question. I know that you went all for letter C, and you were thinking, oh, that's your Turner sign, but. Turner sign is not even flank pain. Turner sign is your ecchymosis or bruising, okay? And that's present in pancreatitis. This is motor vehicular accident, okay? So the answer is going to be letter B, everyone, okay? So noted, everybody, all right? So let's have the next question, everyone. This is going to be the last question for tonight, okay? So the question is, which task can be delegated by the registered nurse to the licensed practical nurse when caring for a client with nephrolithiasis? Select all that apply. A. Flush the nephrostomy tube as ordered. B. Perform initial assessment for pain level. C. Administer a poet in alpha injections. Letter D. Adjust intermittent tube feeding rate on pump. E. Administer ketorolac hydrochloride intravenously for pain, or letter F, explain the importance of straining the urine for stones. Okay, so again, which task can be delegated by the registered nurse to the licensed practical nurse when caring for a client with nephrolithiasis? Select all that apply. A, flush the nephrostomy tube as ordered. B, perform initial assessment for pain level. C, Administer poetin alpha injections. D. Adjust intermittent tube feeding on rate on pump. E. Administer ketorolac hydrochloride intravenously for pain. Or letter F. Explain the importance of straining the urine for stones. Okay, so select all that apply, everyone. What do you think is the best answer?
All right. So again, you have to remember the scope of practice for LBNs or licensed vocational nurses or LPNs also. Okay. So A, B, C, or D, everybody. Okay, A, B, C, or D. All right, so we have different answers to these questions. Okay. All right, so the answer everyone is going to be letter, let's see. Okay, if you have the answers already, let's see what you have. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's gonna be the answer. All right, so Halima Talimi says A, C, D, Galina, here back ACD also. Lin Mayo ACD. So let's see what's your answer, everyone. Gian Torres is ACD. Mulu Hadera is AD. Okay. All right. So let's see what's your final answer, everyone. Okay. So what the task can be delegated to the LPN? Okay. Or license. Vocational nurse or licensed practical nurse. All right. What task? Okay. So the answer is going to be. All right. So the answer will be one is going to be. Let's see. So this is a very interesting question because I think most of you have like different answers in this question. So let's try to find out. Okay. All right. So the answer to this question, everyone, is going to be. All right. So there'll be your letter A, letter C, and then also you have your letter D. Okay. So flushing the nephrostomy tube can be done by your LPN, okay? Normally, we do not irrigate the nephrostomy tube unless it is ordered. And we have to, to be very careful because we do not want to uh, damage the kidney. So flushing the nephrostomy tube is ordered. Um, letter C, administer epoetin alpha injection because your epigen or procrit or epoetin alpha can be given uh, through injection, or usually it's given through injections, and that would be uh, subcutaneously. You also adjust intermittent to filling rate on pump. That could be also a responsibility or a task that you can delegate to the LPN, you know, adjusting intermittent to feeding rate on pump. So that's okay. So A, C, and D are within the scope of practice of your LPNs. Remember that, okay? Now, your letter B, performing initial assessment for pain level, that is initial assessment that has to be the RN. Initial assessment, especially upon admission. Okay? Now, your letter E, administer ketorolac hydrochloride or your toradol, the LPN can give that. But what's wrong with letter E? The word intravenously. Because your LPNs cannot give intravenous medications. Remember that. Only subcutaneous and only intramuscular. Okay? So that's why letter E is not included because of the word intravenously. Your letter F explained the importance of straining the urine for stones. That would be uh, RN because that is teaching. We go back to our very basic principle. What is the meaning of eat? Again, everyone. Do not delegate eat. The RN does not delegate it, EAT. Evaluation, assessment, and also you have your teaching. So your letter B is initial assessment. Your letter F is teaching. So we do not delegate that, the RN to the LPN. So hopefully guys, you got the correct answer and uh, watch more videos so that you we learn in general, you know, the uh, concepts, very important for delegation, okay?
So hopefully guys, you got the right answer for that. Okay, so let's have a shout out. Who were the students who got that right? Congratulations to some of you guys. Very good. Okay, so before we end for tonight, everyone, I would just like to uh, give a shout out to our product. Okay, so be part of the Matus Tribe. You have the I Can Do It uh, water bottle here. It's a steel tumbler, everybody. Okay, and it's really very nice. You can see that. Okay. And this tumbler, everyone, um, uh, is uh, promotes positive thinking. So positive thinking, which is really very important for your preparation for the NCLEX, everybody. Okay. So it says, I can do it. Be part of the Matus tribe. Okay. So you can visit our merchandise store if you want to get uh, this tumbler. Okay. And also, of course, everybody, um, please visit matusnursingreview.com or matusnursingreviewacademy.com to know our courses, okay? Especially our online courses, everyone. We have the self-study programs, okay, uh, that comes with a workbook, okay? So congratulations to our winner for our 90-day online NCLEX review last week. It's Iano Nemes, okay? So give her a congratulations, everybody. Okay, for having won the 90 day online NCLEX review. Okay, all right, congratulations, guys. So, again, everyone, thank you. Hopefully, that you got four out of four tonight, or hopefully, that you learned something for tonight, everybody. Okay, so I'll see you again next Thursday, everyone, and thank you for all of your comments. If you have any questions, you can send us a message. It's either me or my staff will respond. And also, you can also ask your questions in the comment section because I'll be responding there also, everybody. Okay? So don't forget again, we have a sale going on for the Memorial Day. And hopefully, if you pass your NCLEX, always let us know. So send your messages to us and we would like to share them with the group, everyone. So always think positive. You can always pass your NCLEX. It's just around the corner and we're here to help you out. So congratulations, everyone, and have a nice night.